remember that freak cow? When we did that long division step? Okay. Um, let's look at this problem. If this were an integral, okay, and we were having to figure it out, it'd be great if we could do what we just did, but the derivative of the denominator is not the numerator at all. Um, and there's not that whole substituting thing that we could do. Um, so here is what we need to do. We need to simplify this using long division. So let's do that because it's been a while and some of you never really learned it when we did it. I need to put a placeholder in front of, or excuse me, in the middle of my divisor because I'm missing the x. It's not necessarily absolutely 100% uh, required there. It's just going to help you keep things a little bit more organized if you do. All right, so in this case, well, in every case, you divide the first term by the first term. In this case, x squared divided by x squared is 1. So this is going to be a very short long division problem. Okay, we multiply everything here by 1. 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times 0x is 0x. 1 times 1 is 1. We change the signs and we add. So that cancels. That's what's supposed to happen. x plus negative 0x is just x. And 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So x is our remainder. So do you remember how we wrote the remainder? We put the remainder over what we divided by. Um, we're going to do several. Okay, we're going to do several of these. Huh? I changed the signs and x. Or is that the part you're talking about? Okay, so if we were asked to integrate this, so this is what the problem looks like. The integral of x squared plus x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, we can't do what we were just doing because the derivative of the denominator is not the numerator. So here's our result. We're going to rewrite this. 1 plus x over x squared plus 1 is the exact same expression as that original um, rational expression. Okay. But now we've got something that we can integrate. Okay, we can integrate this. I'm going to split it up into two pieces. I'm going to look at this as the integral of 1 dx plus, because remember if we're adding stuff like this, we can separate it into multiple integrals. So the integral of the 1 with respect to x plus the integral of x over x squared plus 1 with respect to x. The first one's really easy. The antiderivative of 1 is x. Okay. The second one requires a little bit of u substitution. So my u is my denominator. But this time, <coughs> the derivative of that is 2x. Okay. Now, I don't have 2 in my problem, so I'm going to move that. So that's 1 half du is equal to x dx. This gets replaced with one half du, and this part is my u. Here's the natural log coming back, plus one half natural log. My u was x squared plus one. x squared plus one is always positive, so I'm going to drop the absolute value and just use parentheses, and don't forget my plus c on the end. Now, take the derivative of this to check. Obviously, it would be really easy to get it back to the second form. And then, uh, if you remember, adding rational expressions, then you can make sure that it's the original. But um, I promise that's the answer right there. See, I told y'all not to forget that stuff in Greek, guys. It's going to come back. It makes me really sad inside, but I'll get over it. <clears throat> You're not the only one. You're not the only one. Yeah. It's different. 
it's different. They, I think it is more difficult because most of, I mean, it depends. There are several different calculuses that you can take and it depends on your matrix. Uh, if this were our integral, okay, x cubed minus 6x minus 20 over x plus 5, Okay, looking at that, I would love to be able to factor that numerator and try and cancel something, but it ain't happening. I would love if the derivative of the denominator were in the numerator, but the derivative of the denominator is only one, so thus long division is our only option. We've got to rewrite the expression. So x plus 5 into x cubed. We don't have an x squared. Do yourself a favor. Put you a placeholder. Minus 6x minus 20. Okay, so first term x cubed divided by x. Subtract the exponents. That gives you x squared. Line it up. Okay, it makes life easier if you line it up. Multiply. x squared times x is x cubed. That should always be the same thing x squared times 5, that is not going to, sometimes it will be the same thing, but usually not. Change your signs and add, so the x cubes cancel, 0 plus negative 5 is negative 5x squared. Bring down your other terms. Okay. Now we divide the next leading term, negative 5x squared by x. So that gives us negative 5x. And then we multiply. Negative 5x times x is negative 5x squared. It should be. Negative 5x times positive 5 is negative 25x. Change the signs and add. This is what my math week kids are forgetting to do now, is change the signs. Those cancel. Negative 6 plus 25 is 19. You multiply, you multiply what you put on top by the divisor. Like yeah, it's exactly like regular multiplication. There's just letters in there. The first one you get x times x to the minus 5, and then the next one is 5 times x to the minus 5. Oh, yeah, all the seven. I think so. Like, right now you're doing 5 times x to the minus 5 x. To get that letter, that made that easy. Okay, so I divide it into the x squared plus the x, x squared plus the x. Add it to the x and divide the answer here. Negative 5x times x and x plus 5. Okay, that's not what I thought you were doing. It's always times the thing on the outside. Okay, last one, 19x divided by x is 19. Multiply. 19 times x is 19x. 19 times 5 is uh, five, 5 times 9 is 45, 95. Okay. Change the signs and add. Part of the introduction. At this time, students who receive five patrol statistics need to report to the cafeteria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, just going to make it sound like, I don't know, that makes me think of Paw Patrol, but that's just because I'm there way too many toddlers. But, uh, for a major, negative 115. Okay, so this is our rewritten, bless you, rational expression. So that is what we're going to integrate now. Okay, we're going to integrate x squared minus 5x plus 19, which is really easy because that's just a polynomial, minus the integral of 115 over x plus 5. I went ahead and just split it up while I was at it instead of having to write it twice. Okay, so the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. The antiderivative of negative 5x is negative 5x squared over 2. The antiderivative of 19 is 19x. Okay, I'm not going to do u substitution with this one because it's really easy. Okay, it's minus 115 natural log of x plus 5 
because the derivative of x plus 5 is just 1, so we really don't need u substitution. Don't forget the plus c on the end. We do need absolute value bars here because x plus 5 can have negative values. Okay. Whether I need the absolute value? Okay, so we can take a log of a negative number. So if this expression right here can be negative, okay, if, say for example, x is negative 10, negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5, so we have to slap absolute values on it. If that were x squared plus 5, square the number, it's positive, add 5 to it, it's still positive, you don't have to worry about it. It's going to be like leaving off the C. I mean, it's going to be like minus 0.25 or something, but yes. Okay. So it can never hurt to have the absolute value. Even if it were x squared plus 5 and you put absolute value around it anyways, that's fine. I mean, you're just guaranteeing that something that's positive is still positive. So always put absolute value. Anytime the natural log is involved, always put natural value. Or absolute value. Yes. Um, I'm just telling you that sometimes you'll see it on a test or something, and sometimes it won't have absolute value, and that's the reason why, is because the expression is always positive, so you really don't need it. Okay?